and welcome to today's workshop on mental health. I'm Erin and I'm Zoe and today we're going to be just having a little chat about um, a really important topic that is often quite silenced um, and that is the topic of mental health. So we're going to be having a wee chat through our own experiences with mental health and um, we're going to be having a chat about how it displays itself, what the Bible says about mental health and ways that we can overcome and battle mental health. Um, so before we get started, we're just going to have a little chat through um, about why we're doing this workshop. We thought it would be best if we explained um, why is there such a focus on mental health? So when I think back to my earliest years in high school, uh, from my own experience, I rarely heard the words mental health um, and I was definitely unaware of what it was and how it affected so many people. However, as I look back on what I know now, I can see totally throughout the years the impact and the effect of mental health um, in lots of people around me. So today, um, in society, mental health is a topic that is spoken across schools in Scotland from a really young age, um, and it's something of high importance, and it's often a topic of, of conversation that's brought up. So why is this a topic that we want to focus on so much now? So when we kind of thought about it, we had a look at some statistics on mental health, and I just thought these from, it was the Public Health Scotland website, and it was saying that one in four people experience some form of mental health in their lifetime. So for me, for example, Annie and I actually we're both families of four. So mm -hmm. the likelihood is that one person in our family, or even if that's not the case, then your friends, you know, people at school, that's a high percentage of people that obviously will have some sort of experience. And then at any one time, one in six people can be dealing with a problem at that very moment. So the figures that we had a look at kind of reflected why we thought it was such an important topic to do, especially because in our own personal experience, it's not one we feel that's been talked about a lot or maybe exclusively um, as mental health. So yeah, today for what you'll need, um, you can have a bit of paper, pen, notebook, whatever you've got at home, um, either for notes. And then we've also got a little interactive part towards the end for you to kind of write down and think about your own experiences. So you'll need it for that as well. And just uh, one of the other reasons why we felt like this was such an important topic to talk about, um, especially this year, I think we can all attest to the fact that this past year and a half has been really difficult for each of us. Um, and for some of us, the isolation has led to loneliness, anxieties, feeling of doubt, um, unknown what's going to happen. And then for some, and then it's the other side, the freedom that we now have. Um, we see newer feelings of anxiety and self-doubt creep up. And I can certainly say that I've seen that in myself. Um, and that's where I've struggled most recently. So we'll talk a little bit about that la later on. So let's get started. Yeah, just before I go into what I'm going to talk about, we just want to say like a little disclaimer. Obviously, mental health is a giant topic. We'll probably only sort of scratch the surface today and kind of what we're going to speak about is our own experiences. So yours might not reflect what ours looks like or you might only relate to a little bit and that's totally fine. We're not um, claiming to know everything about mental health. We just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, and yeah, so... To begin with, I'm going to go over kind of a bit about myself and a particular person who's been quite vocal about their experience and then Erin's going to go on about her experiences. So, um, to begin with, um, it's kind of my story. Yes, this is a picture of me, <laughs> so you got a reference. So, um, as a child, I probably always defined myself or was call called a warrior from a really young age and I put about four years old that's why there's a picture of me about four years old that's so cute a lot cuter <laughs> um so I struggled like even silly things well I call them silly now at the time you didn't feel silly like um I don't want to paint my mom and dad in a bad light because they weren't at all but when they used to go out to normally it was a prayer meeting not a small group it wasn't okay. anything significant um, if they were late or if I knew that it finished at eight and we could be back by quarter past eight and it was like 20 past eight, my mind would usually go and jump to like the worst. It would normally be they were in an accident or they were in hospital or something like that. Um, so from a really young age, and I remember I did speak to my parents about this because they used to ask like, why I was up so late and it was because I used to worry so much. But I kind of developed uh, coping strategies that weren't really healthy. I would just either ignore it, put it off. Um, one of the things I was taught was to think of like a safe place, um, but I did, didn't really deal with it head on. It was just 
kind of ignoring it. And obviously I was four years old when it started, so I didn't, obviously the expectation isn't when you're four years old, you can do all that. But it wasn't until I was around 15 that um, it kind of became a big part of my life. It was actually around exam time, which I don't think was ironic at all. I think it was probably a big factor in it. Um, I actually got medically unwell, if that makes sense. So I had something wrong with my stomach, which meant I was sick all the time and I couldn't keep any food down. But I do think partially it was medical. I do think a large majority of it was probably to do with my own mental health, my own thinking at exam time. I don't think I really could cope with that. But I didn't really realise that at the time. I just purely blamed it on the fact I wasn't medically all right. Um, so even though I had dealt with sort of anxiety and worry from a young age, um, I'd used sort of evasive strategies that didn't really deal with it. And so I became more anxious and started having like panic attacks. I struggled to breathe and all that sort of um, thing, which was quite difficult at 15 um, but I was physically ill for about six weeks, so it was pretty much during the entire exam time. Those of you that have done exams, you'll kind of understand it's over a long period of time. But even after that, I couldn't return to school or I didn't return to school um, until the August. So I skipped the whole month of June. Um, I, well, didn't skip it, I was off, but I couldn't go back to school and I didn't return until the August. Um, I actually remember going to camp that year quite vividly. Um, because I remember my gran dropped us off and um, I remember I was sick before I got there and I was sick a few times during the week um, and I was blaming sort of the effects of the medication even though I was medically okay. Um, I don't say that to blame anyone at camp because I didn't tell anyone, I very much kept it to myself um, but I kind of realised I like physically and mentally couldn't cope because I was out with you know my safe space which was probably my house anywhere out where that wasn't really my safe space. So 15 was probably where I would say that my anxiety started. That's where when I was 15, I kind of realised there was sort of a problem with it, especially, you know, doing things like camp that I would normally do that all of a sudden, not, I would maybe get a wee bit nervous about going to camp, but nothing like it was that year. Um, however, it was about 15 and a half when that started, but it lasted for about the next two and a half years, believe it or not. It was a long time for me. Um, and I felt very stuck and I got to the point where I would sort of rarely leave the house unless I had to. And any excuse that I got, I would grab onto. So anything I could avoid being around other people um, because I couldn't control it. And that was very much what my anxiety was based on, anything I couldn't control. And believe it or not, there's a lot in your life that you <laughs> cannot control. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, um, and I put this on the slide, God became the only thing I felt I could rely on. And it wasn't by choice, which felt quite shocking to type up there, because obviously God should always be your choice. But at that point, I needed him to get up and get through the day. It wasn't an option for me. I don't really know how people cope with anxiety or mental health without God, to be honest, because for those two and a half years, mm -hmm. that was the only thing that kind of got me through the day. Um, just an example, like I used to get up at about five, half five every morning before school, where I would just either pray, worship, read my Bible, soak, all those sorts of things. And that was literally just because that was all I could do to then have enough strength to get out the house. Um, I did write in my notes, it's not a brag, because I know some people sometimes are like, I get to worship or soak two hours a day. It wasn't a brag for me. Um, I just had to do it or else I wouldn't have left the house that day. I would have had an excuse. Um, now, one person... I'm going to talk about him a bit later, Brian Johnson, he said this thing where he said, consider it a gift when God is your only option. And at first, I find that quote quite difficult to come to terms with. But then I realised sort of in that two year period where it was my only option, like these were the three things I really realised that one, God is very real. Two, he can change everything. Um, he managed to get me up and out of bed every day. And three, he's a very reliable and loving father, and that never really changed. So in 2015, so this is like fast forward in two and a half years, um, I just turned 18 actually, so probably a little bit older than most of you are now. Um, and I kind of got to the point of where I was, you know, dealing, experiencing, suffering from anxiety that I kind of was like, I'll do anything at this point to not feel like this anymore. It was just such a like suffocating feeling and I kind of realized it wasn't how God intended me to live my life 
um, I remember someone no no I don't think someone said actually I remember I think God said to me like or I thought but it was probably from God um where he said you know I died for you all that sort of stuff why would I want you to live in anxiety if I went through all that pain for you Mm -hmm. to live in freedom and that kind of was a big moment for me um I just want to add before I um go on further about it that obviously at that age I was very young um I probably am still considered quite young however don't let your age sort of invalidate your feelings so often we say and that's why I've got that image there there's no junior Holy Spirit, you know, the same Holy Spirit that's in us when we are 4, 10, 15 years old is the same Holy Spirit that's in a 60, 70, 80 year old. And that's the same with your junior emotions. There's no junior emotions and there's no junior mental health. So mm-hmm. I just want to um, emphasize that because a few people did say to me at the time, you know, like you're only 15, what have you got to worry about? But like since then, I've been to like uni, I've started a job, I've started jobs where I've been going between two schools and all that. And I've never felt the same way as I did when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So I just want to emphasize that. Um, So I knew that God was real at that point, obviously. It was more than obvious for me um, during this time. It was the only way I've been able to get through it. But I also understand that I needed more help. Um, And that's why I put on this slide, acknowledge when you need help sometimes. You can just bring it to God or you can have a conversation with someone and it does manage to walk you out of what you're feeling. However, for me, and this is the first time I did this, I then went for Christian counselling. And what they were able to do and what God was able to do through their help was identify the origin of my anxiety, which I realised was back when I was four years old when something had happened. I thought for a long time it just was when I was 15. but I realised it had actually been 14 years of sort of bad habits and bad thinking that have led me to that point um so yeah with God I then had to relearn how to think how to not think straight to the worst um and I struggled to find at the time kind of like what Ian said I think it's a bit different now but material about mental health I think um the church was maybe a little bit slower in picking it up I think sometimes there's a bit of taboo around it um some people maybe have the belief if you've got God you shouldn't be anxious which I do think is true but I do think there's also times where um you're maybe the enemy tries to attack your weakness which might make um, anxiety and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so I then came across someone called Brian Johnson who I knew knew of previously but he was very honest in his sermon he was very authentic and I remember the first time um I watched it I was just kind of stunned because everything he said felt like it was relevant to me and it was really good to hear someone talk about it who um, I would say is really experienced and established and you know he's by all means successful um, and he kind of admitted his own struggles so just for those of you that don't know um, he's part of somewhere called Bethel Church and he's written loads and loads and loads of songs and won many awards for them um, he's married to a woman called Jane Johnson and they've got five kids I realised in that photo there's only four kids but I couldn't find one with five the goat is <laughs> the goat one of their children <laughs> <laughs> but unless I went and stalked his Instagram which I didn't have permission to do I used the one that Google <laughs> had up on their thing um, yeah so they've got five kids and they live on a farm he's very much um, he's a pastor's kid he was brought up in church um, the whole sort of nine yards as you'd say like he's very much um, a go-getter after God and he very much believes um, that God has transformed his life however in Brian's late 30s so a little bit older than I was he had a nervous breakdown um, and he suffered from panic attacks due to this and he actually eventually had to be hospitalized to allow him to breathe now Brian was kind of similar to me in the sense of when he was younger, he struggled with anxiety, but he believed that he sort of dealt with that and it was no longer a problem. What was really um, important, I think, in what his sermon, and I'll let you know at the end what it is, so you can go have a look at it. Um, he spoke about handling pain and that when we experience pain, he would often just stuff it down and say that he was fine. Um, and I think what kind of revealed was many of us do that, myself included, Um, But by doing this, we don't actually know how to react or deal with pain when we're faced with a severe moment or maybe a season of pain in our lives. And in fact, we do spend most of our lives avoiding pain at all costs, which I think 
um, we can all say we probably would do if there's a situation where we know we'd get hurt, we'd avoid it because that's just kind of our instinct to do. But when we do face the pain head on, he revealed that it could totally change us and then release us into our destiny. So often the thing we're most scared of is normally the thing God's maybe calling us to do or wants us to maybe tap into to help us. So for me, um, with my anxiety, it was all about being around people, all about that control, when really maybe my calling is now as a teacher where I'm around 30 odd kids a day. I have to speak to many adults, many parents, and to think of that as 15 compared to now, it's a complete difference. And maybe that's why God was um, calling me into that and maybe the enemy was trying to pre um, prevent me from doing it. Um, it also raised this point where pain is actually fear but we mask it okay so we're actually when we're feeling fear it's because we're scared of some pain and we hide it in that which I thought was a really important point and what we will do is we'll often use activities different people you know coming and watching telly at night and running around all the time never stopping to distract ourselves from dealing with the pain instead of um, dealing with it head on and I just want to say um we are obviously designed to feel the pain. God didn't make us emotionless, okay? But the difference is we decide to feel it and then bring it to the Father, just like Jesus did in the Bible often. He often would feel pain about what he knew was going to happen or about what had happened, but he brought it straight to the Father. He didn't, like, keep it with him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference with us. Um, so Brian's um, nervous breakdown sort of started when he was out somewhere called the Sundial Bridge and he could just feel straight away he wasn't okay he had something wasn't right with him so he wasn't in a specific situation he was just out with one of his kids um, but he had to come back home and him and his wife walked around their sort of property because he was trying to sort of walk out and do what he used to do when he was young but he was realizing it was something much much bigger than that um, and Brian Johnson kind of said this quote that I mentioned earlier, but I'm just going to highlight it again. He said, consider a gift when God is your only option. And he said that because some people never have the chance to walk through having God as their only option. And one of the only good things I would say about being in a period like that or a season like that, whatever you'd like to call it, is that you sort of, you really rely on him. There's nothing you can really do without not running it by God but talking to God or listening to him or praying or worshipping like you very much rely 100% on him and it's one thing when you kind of walk out of it you're like you'll miss it a little bit because you realise you know you don't have all the time or you're now stronger that you can go back to sort of more normal things like um, I don't know hanging out with people at the weekend or whatever it may be going to clubs that you didn't do before and the, I'm just going to mention a few sort of verses that kind of tie in with this as well. So one thing Brian Simmons says, um, he's the Passion Translation writer, so he translates it into that sort of version. He states that faith is an inner confidence that God above and God alone is enough. And in the Bible, every person who knew that they needed a saviour got what they needed when they came to Jesus okay so when they knew that they needed God and that they needed something from God they would get it so it's a really important part that he's never going to like just forget about you because you've done something um, and similar to um, myself all Brian Johnson kind of really did during his time was read pray and worship and he said when you go after God like this purely just to know him, just to understand him with no agenda, then he unveils things to you that you might not know. Um, and I think that's really important as well. So Jesus spent time with God before every major event in his life because he drew strength from it. And obviously Jesus is our example to follow. Um, and so I think that's a really good thing to sort of acknowledge and follow that pattern, you know, before big things in our life, if we go and spend time, we can draw strength from it. Um, in Philippians 1 9, so this verse is Paul talking to the church in Philippi, and he's kind of expressing that if they keep chasing after God, it won't be a one and done moment. They'll keep um, revealing things to him. And the verse says, I continue to pray for your love and to grow and increase more and more until it overflows, bringing you into the rich revelations of spiritual insight in all things. So, yeah, just keep you know, praying about it, keep going after it, keep understanding what God is at what you want to do. 
And the next bit, um, I think oftentimes, I think Christians and probably non-Christians as well would um, have this viewpoint, sort of the misconception of when we have God, our life is automatically easy, um, which ironically in the Bible, it doesn't really talk much about. It always talks about how um, we've got the narrow and the wide path. This is obviously the narrow path, the harder path to get through. However, the difference is obviously that we can go to him. So um, the verse Lamentations 3, 28 to 30, um, this is the message version. It says, when life is heavy and hard to take, go off by yourself, enter the silence, bow in prayer, don't ask questions, wait for hope to appear, don't run from trouble, take it full face. The worst is never the worst. And I thought this is a really good verse because it doesn't say when things get difficult, it'll just kind of get smoothed over. It obviously says, go and bow your head in prayer, just listen. Don't run away from what's about to happen, just face it and work through it. Um, but I think when we bring it to God, we often find a peace from it because our strength comes from him and that's authentic. I think one of the things um, that God knows is he knows what gifts he's given us. And so he isn't often impressed by our gifts because he knows, he knows what we've got. Normally when we're trying to show off our gifts, it's maybe for other people, but he's impressed by the limitless face we demonstrate in good and bad times. So he's impressed by the fact we still get up and we still pray and we still worship. He's not impressed so much that we go off and show everyone, you know, I don't know, whatever we've been working on or something, but like that, he's impressed by the time we spend with him. So I think what's really important is we focus on getting, you know, your praise from God and not from others, because you can be at peace with that. Because when your praise is from God, you're not worried about what others think, you're just worried about what God thinks. So yeah, the last couple of points I just want to make is make sure that when you are in a season like this, make sure you experience the pain and you bring it to God because that is ultimately what's most important. And you'll find that he is faithful when you bring it to God um, and you're able to understand what's happening in your life. That's what's so important. And it might be that you're maybe not quite like me. You might just be experiencing a little bit of anxiety or Maybe it's the fact that you've got some stuff in your life that you need to forgive before you push it down and it becomes a bigger part of your life. Or it could be that you just need to get right with God again to understand, you know, about yourself. Whatever stage it is, just ensure that you put God like back in the centre and that you make sure you're aware of what's going on in your life. It might be like me, you might need further help. It might be that you're not even there yet, which is a lot better believe me if you're a little bit further back and you can deal with it now before it maybe blows up and yeah so that's kind of my sort of story and how I think Brian Johnson's sort of his own testimony helped me and kind of how we can deal with it and I'm just going to pass over to Erin. Mm, that was so helpful and I feel like yeah it's so nice to see um like someone's experience and then them having coming out the other side and I'm sure that'll be so helpful for young people because you're not obviously that old I know I'm not old, older yet. than me older than me but <laughs> um yeah I feel like that was so helpful um and I'm sure that has really impacted what a lot of people who are watching this so um I'm going to go on to speak about my experience um recently so Zoe spoke about um like in our childhood we're starting our childhood into um adolescent and years and I'm going to speak about um, my experience recently, just in the past few months. So I kind of mentioned um, earlier about um, COVID and this past year and a half and what everyone's experienced. And so I just want to chat about um, my experience and maybe that you might be able to relate to some of the things that I'm going to be speaking about. Um, so to give you a little bit of context, I just graduated uni. Um, I'm going into my first big girl job. <laughs> saying goodbye to Subway um, <laughs> and I feel like I'm surrounded right now by great friends and um, my family have a really strong relationship with God however and so then you would think well how could you have anxieties how could you um, have self-doubt if you have like a strong foundation around you um, however I find that as the world is starting to open back up again as we're starting to be able to see each other again I've been feeling a lot of self-doubt and almost being used to being alone and wanting to be wanting to be alone and being scared of conversations and actually like 
forgetting how to speak with people um because I think that's been something that we're all like so used to being through a screen now and it's something that it will take a lot of kind of unlearning um of how to do that so Covid has not only affected people physically and people's bodies, but also mental health as well. And it's actually been named post pandemic reality where we're just being thrown back into a busy life and just told to get on with it. And that's actually really difficult. So we just want to let you know that like if you're finding it difficult going back out and living your life again, you're totally not alone. Um, and a lot of us are experiencing that. So from my experience, I know how easy it is to just kind of slip and fall into that mindset um, where your feelings and your emotions can control your daily living and our feelings can totally deceive us. Um, like, for example, if I'm feeling lonely, in my mind, that is because I don't have anyone that cares about me and I don't have anyone who wants to um, be surrounded by me, but I know that that's not true. And Or if I'm feeling like I'm not good at anything or I don't have any skills in something, that means that I've achieved nothing in my life, which I know that isn't true as well. Um, so I just want to take some time to look at what the Bible says and to look at what God says about our feelings and emotions, because it's important that we know that emotions and feelings aren't an enemy. They're not the enemy, but they can be used by the enemy um, to distract and to destroy us from who God wants us to be, kind of like what Zoe said earlier. Um, so God gave us emotions and feelings for a reason and we're made in his image and we see so many times in the Bible that Jesus wept, Jesus was angry, he was joyful and we know that our emotions were created and given to us by God but um, sometimes it isn't just as simple to say that um, and we're learning this week at camp um, about the fruit of the spirit and we see that if we're in Christ we see these fruits in our lives but what about the other um, emotions and feelings that we feel too so there's feelings of um, that can creep up in our lives like self-doubt self-consciousness and um, anxieties depression so what does the bible say about these emotions and um, before we have a wee look at that I just want you to take a minute and think about how quickly your emotions can change so I know this from my own experience like emotions constantly change um, depending on the situation, depending on who we're around, just depending on a time scale. Um, and we know that our feelings can change at the drop of a hat. So how reliable does that make our emotions if they change so quickly? And then I want you to contrast that and think about God's word. Does his word change? I know that the answer of this to no, it is no, that it totally doesn't change. In fact, in all honesty, I'm sure Zoe can relate to this as well, it's literally the only constant thing in our lives. It is totally the foundation and rock. And in John um, chapter 14, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He is constant, he gives us hope. And this world cannot do that. So just because we feel feelings... Um, such as being um, useless or hopeless or unlovable or worthless. It doesn't mean that we are these things. Feelings are not facts. And I heard someone say recently, which is just on the screen, that don't, don't throw your feelings in the trunk of the car, but don't let them drive the car. And I think in Psalm 19, we see how David deals with his emotions. And I'm just going to read that to you now. It says, how long, Lord, how long will you forgive me? Or sorry, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrows in my heart? How long will my en enemy triumph over me? Look at me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. So I think we can see from this verse and we see it in so many times in the Bible that we're called to live by faith and not by our emotions and our feelings. God wants us to be honest. And like we spoke about earlier, he wants us to be honest and upfront with him about what we're, what's going on in our lives. But then we must get back to the truth and just stick with it the unwavering foundation that we have. And this psalm was written by David, who was one a, a man of God who was used for so much. 
yet we still see that he had such clear struggles that we can all relate to. And he had battles with his emotions and his feelings, but he knew that his changing feelings never changed who God was or how faithful God was. And I think that's something that we can all relate to. And I hope that that's something that you can relate to as well. And sometimes, um, let's change this over. Sometimes we want answers quickly. Why am I feeling like this? What's triggered this? What can I do to make this go away? Or how can you cope with feelings? And I think, in my opinion, the only one that really matters is how can I cope? Because there is no certainty that feelings, feelings that you're having will go away. God doesn't promise that, but he does promise that he will be faithful, that he will remain and that he will care for his children. And there are so many verses that tell us about God's faithfulness. Um, when we're going through hard times about how he cares for us and the peace that we receive from remaining in God and his truth and his word. And I want to read some of these verses as a reminder because we're all human and we all need a reminder sometimes um, because we don't have all the answers. And um, yeah, I just feel like it would be a great encouragement um, to encourage you with God's word. So I'm just going to read through a few of these verses just now. Um, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's found in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. The next one is, for God has given us a spirit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And that's found in 2 Timothy. The next one is, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made in perfect love. And that's found in 1 John. Um, in Psalm 94, it says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. And the last one is in, found in Isaiah chapter 43. It says, but now this is what the Lord says, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by your name, you are mine. And it's so important, like we spoke about earlier as well, like that we share our feelings and that can be so helpful in managing the feelings that we have. God's given us the gift of each other, our friends, our family, people at school, people at work, um, believers who we can share the burden with and they can share our burden. And it's so important that sometimes we have people just to remind us of God's truth. So I hope that those verses there just maybe spoke to you and just reminded you of the truth of who God is. Um, as we spoke about earlier, it's so important that we bring these things to the light and we deal with them. Um, in Proverbs 28, it says, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. So when we come to God with our thoughts and our feelings, he is the only one who can restore us. But this means being still in his presence. And I think that can be something that is very challenging if you're going through anxieties and depressions and all these things it's being still is something that's quite hard to do um, in the book of Sam it means it means to stop it means to cease striving to stop fighting it means acknowledging God for who he is um, but that means being still and it means becoming unbusy and not to get on with the hustle and bustle of life to just take time but we're told to prioritize time with him we're told to listen to what our bodies need and whether, whether that is um, rest, exercise, getting to bed early, um, and also as a believer, reading our Bible, spending time um, in prayer, spending time with um, other Christians in fellowship, these things are so important and they can totally heal and um, help us fight the battle with anxiety. Um, yeah, and just as I finish off, I just want to um, just encourage you to fix your thoughts on God and his promises um, in the battlefields of our minds. Um, practice awareness of your thoughts and um, being aware of them, but taking them captive and not allowing them to control you. Because as we said earlier, feelings are not facts. Feelings constantly change, but God and who he is and his word is the only thing that remains um, and just as it says there, God is the truth. He remains the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever. Um, and this, this final verse here is what God calls us to dwell on. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, 
whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God, the God of peace will be with you. So I just hope that that might be a little encouragement to you to think and practice on the things that God has given you and peace will be with you and bring to the surface worries and anxieties and hand them over to him. Um, yeah. So one of the things we just wanted to end with was obviously we found that there's now quite a lot of information mm -hmm. about um, mental health out there, particularly in the sort of church world, which is great. Um, but we just like to put some people you can maybe get further information on it. Brian Johnson, obviously, who I've talked about, he has a book called When God Becomes Real. I've got that book. It's a really good book. Um, it talks you through his entire experience from when he was young till now, the contrasts, um, how he identified what made him anxious, what started it off, what later on in his 30s um, has was to do with unforgiveness issues um, that then set off his second sort of nervous breakdown that he had. So he's amazing to listen to. Um, Abby Stumble is also one. She's very energetic, mm -hmm. isn't she? Yeah. She's very um, all at it, very American, but she is really good. Um, she herself identifies as someone who struggles with or has struggled with her emotions for a long, long time, but um, she's now kind of understanding them and helping other people to understand them as well. Um, Alan and AJ Jones as well, they do a few um, podcasts on it. My mum is a very big fan of them, so she was telling me about all the stuff they do. Um, another one, it's not on the slides, but he did a couple of um, sermons sort of recently on it. Stephen Furtick, who you might have heard of if you're into sort of your worship music and things like that. He's also a really big name. Um, yeah, so just at the bottom of the screen there, um, as we said at the start, if you could have grabbed a pen and a piece of paper, um, we just wanted to leave you with something that maybe you can do um, to help you. And it doesn't need to be when you're feeling um, really big feelings of being anxious and um, self-doubt and things like this. It can just be a daily thing that you could do or um, just something when you feel things cropping up or coming up in you that um, this might just be able to help you so we would just encourage you to write this down just now and um, you can maybe even do it just now if you want there's no pressure but um, we thought that it was really important um, to just leave you with five things five little steps that you could follow um, to help you identify your feelings so the first one is to identify what it is you're feeling um, to acknowledge what it is you're feeling and to know that it is a real emotion and it is a real feeling and um, the second thing is to understand why you're feeling this so um kind of like zoe said earlier like i feel like such an important thing is to identify where it's coming from to try and understand why am i feeling this way so it could be um anxieties in school it could be maybe something's going on in your personal life with your friends or in your family that's making you feel anxious or um, nervous about something to so just to understand why it is you're feeling this way and do you want to see the next one yeah three we put share i think for it's quite an important one i think mm -hmm. it takes responsibility for you to share it because you have to then reach out to someone um which isn't always the easiest thing to do as um Aaron and i can both testify to mm -hmm. you have to talk about it um, so that's kind of a thing you have to be willing to change about yourself, something that maybe you have to put yourself out for to then receive the help. I think as well, be, um, I don't want to say cautious with who you share to, but just sometimes not everyone is kind of aware they hear the word mental health and they maybe have certain, you know, preconceptions about it. So just make sure it's someone that you trust, that you know, um, that'll be totally on board you know if you want to share with Erin and I you're more than happy mm -hmm. to contact us on Facebook mm -hmm. um, but yeah because sometimes I think some people you know from my own experience I remember I spoke to a couple of people and they weren't quite understand they just thought I was maybe a wee bit worried about something which wasn't the case um, so yeah make sure that you share but make sure you're kind of cautious with who you share with so that they're kind of really understanding uh, the fourth one we've put pray 
obviously, as you heard from sort of everyone we've talked about, preen is a big part of both being a Christian and when you're walking through something with mental health, really establishing that relationship with God, you know, prayer can be through just reading verses over and over again, getting a solid foundation, getting a really good understanding, you know, how we spoke about how you get your strength from God, um, all that sort of stuff. It might be that you pray with other people, mm-hmm. that as well is a major part of it, you know, ha- having them pray for you um, and all that sort of thing. And the last one we put is kind of self-awareness. So either, you know, if you think it's something minor and you kind of go through these steps and you kind of still feel that something's maybe off or on the other hand if you go through these steps and you feel like a little bit more freer that you've um, solved the problem or dealt with the issue rather um so being aware if you need further help being aware maybe then later on if something else crops up that's maybe quite similar that you can then go back to these steps mm-hmm. or maybe that you go out and seek further help whether that's through talking to someone else or um as I said, Christian counselling was a major part of what helped me. We then are just going to go over some of the verses that we've kind of already mentioned, but just to um, emphasise them again to help you out. So the two verses that I um, chose just to hopefully remind you and encourage you, the first one is found in Luke chapter 12, verse 7. It says, Indeed, the very hairs of your head all are numbered. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And I think especially that first sentence is a verse that we hear like so many times. Um, like God knows how many hairs are on your head and he knows everything about you. But like this is actually the truth. Like this is actually real. And sometimes we need to be reminded that there is someone who cares so deeply about us and that knows everything about us more than your mum and dad, more than your friends, more than your siblings. He knows everything about you, and yet he still says you are worth more than many sparrows. Um, and the second one is found in Philippians um, chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah, and then my bottom two I've already spoken about, but just again to over them, we had Philippians 1, 9, which um, was when Paul was talking to um, his the church in Philippi. Um, it said, I continue to pray for your love to grow and increase more and more until it overflows, bringing you into the rich revelations of spiritual insight and all things. So that one was more about continuing to develop in that relationship with God when you maybe feel... Um, a little bit off or maybe you already know that you're having um, thoughts or your thinking isn't quite where it should be that to go back to God and get um, the revelations and information from him and the second one was lamentations um, again that was the one I spoke about about how like the bible doesn't say there isn't going to be times where we find it tricky there isn't going to be times we find it hard but instead it gives us um, help and ways to sort of deal with it so it said when life is heavy and hard to take go off by yourself enter the silence bow in prayer don't ask questions wait for hope to appear don't run from trouble take it full face the worst is never the worst I think that is quite important as well in terms of mental health that last one the worst is never the worst because oftentimes you're worried about something that you know the next week is no longer on your radar or you're worried about something that now looking back you can think oh that wasn't actually as big a deal Mm -hmm. as I thought it was. Yeah and so that's us kind of came to the end of this workshop as we said um, we're not um, professionals or anything like that and um, we just really wanted to share our own experiences and hope that um, maybe if you're going through something similar or that you um, can kind of relate to this maybe in the past that um, it would maybe just be an encouragement to you. So, um, of course, as Zoe said earlier, um, if you want to chat with any of us, um, anyone on the camp team, then please just get in contact and we would be more than happy. Um, and, yeah, I hope that this has been of some encouragement to you um, and has blessed you in some way. I hope that um, you just are able to focus on who you are in God and um, to look past anxieties and fears and um 
these problems that are really real, but to know that there is a really real God out there who is fighting your battles for you as well. So, um, yeah, we hope that you are enjoying camp so far. Um, we hope that you're enjoying the activities and um, the um, worship nights and the um, speaking um, from Scott. <laughs> speaking <laughs> that simple word um, from most Scott. Important <laughs> yeah. The most important bit. Um, yeah, so we hope to see you all soon um, in person. Um, thank you for watching.